Hi everyone, welcome to Humanitarian Chronicles where I document extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. I'm your host, Abby Lodmer, Conscious Comedian and Hippocrates Health Institute Certified Health Educator. And I am here with the amazing Dr. Armighty May, vegan veterinarian, veterinary acupuncturist and animal rights activist in the first degree. Dr. May graduated from UC Davis's veterinary school as the youngest in her class with high honors and didn't leave Davis without making the school and the state of California a more compassionate place for all beings through her advocacy and activism, from improving vegan options in the cafeteria to coordinating ethically sourced cadavers for their vet labs to providing free health care to animals in financially challenged communities and for pets of homeless people. I mean, she runs the gamut. Dr. May is a woman after my own heart. She is the founder and president of VAPA, the Veterinary Association for the Protection of Animals. Thank God for you. And I am just so proud of this humane human, Dr. Armighty May. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Abby. It's a pleasure to be here to join you and share this information with your viewers. Amen. Well, I love what you stand for. And for those who are not familiar with the renowned Dr. May, not only is she a vegan, but she is known as the vegan vet of veganvet.net because she advocates for a vegan diet for dogs and cats. So all of my videos are controversial and this one is no different. So, Dr. May, many people that I know who call themselves animal experts um, tell me that it's actual animal cruelty for me to feed my dog a vegan diet. What do you have to say about this? I don't agree that that's the case. It's actually a kinder diet for both the animals that are not killed for the sourcing of the food as well as the animals being fed the diet, provided that it's nutritionally complete and adequate. And that is important, of course. It needs to meet their nutritional requirements. It's a common misconception that some people have thinking that dogs and cats require meat or animal products to meet their nutritional needs. In actual fact, they can meet their nutritional requirements through plant, mineral, and synthetic sources. They don't have to get those nutrients from animal sources. Oh, I well, as a vegan, I am heartened to know that, and I was so grateful to, when I was doing research about what to feed my dog, the optimum diet and all that, to come across you, and I've met you in person, of course, you're absolutely amazing, but, you know, as a vegan, I'm so heartened that I can feed her a vegan diet because it's always kind of boggled my mind that all of these animal rights activists who, you know, they're picketing about not euthanizing dogs and they want to adopt dogs and cats, they're, they're feeding those dogs and cats thousands of other animals that if I lived on a farm would also be my pets. Goats, chickens, lambs, cats. I mean, yeah, cats and dogs are also in pet food. But yeah, they're feeding thousands of corpses of other animals to this one animal that they rescued. So knowing that my animal can be vegan is so amazing. And yeah. I'm so excited. So yeah, are there... Is, so it's, do you think it's the optimum diet for dogs, let's say? For dogs, I would say yes, because dogs are omnivores biologically and they can adapt quite well to a plant-based diet provided that it meets their nutritional requirements. There are certain breeds of dogs that may develop issues if they're on a kibble-based vegan diet that can make their urine develop crystals. And certain breeds like uh, Bichons, uh, Midger, Schnauzers, Bichon Frises, and those breeds that tend to develop struvite crystals and later stones that can be prone to that if the urine becomes too alkaline. However, if they're eating a wet diet or ideally a fresh, homemade, moist diet with plenty of hydration, they're less likely to develop those crystals. And even non-vegan diets are potentially uh, an issue with developing stones, not to mention the incidence of cancer we're seeing. One in two adult dogs is afflicted with cancer nowadays. Yeah. That is an epidemic. Uh, not yes. to mention the kidney disease and, and the whole host of degenerative diseases that our beloved animal companions are suffering from. And these things could be prevented through feeding a pure diet that doesn't have these extreme toxic loads of heavy metals, which I'd like to go into more depth later on. Please. But 
that it that is that is something that's just powering toxicity into these creatures' bodies, and it, it's no wonder that their organs are failing. I mean, what we're feeding them in combination with the air and water and environmental toxins they're exposed to has its toll for sure. So I think we need to be mindful of that and start measuring it. I mean, as a veterinarian, I think it's so intriguing when we really start looking at what causes disease and address that and get to the root of the issue by prevention through feeding a sound, pure, and plant-based diet, which is much lower on the food chain. So therefore, not only are we not killing animals that are defenseless, sentient beings, we're also providing superior nutrition to our animal companions. I but, couldn't agree then, more. I, I couldn't yeah. agree more. Well, it's it's interesting because I've read so much. I'm a researcher. I'm a researcher. I've read so much about the optimum diet for dogs. I have a dog. That's why I'm so interested in dogs. I know you talk a lot about cats too, which we'll get into. But in that reading, and of course it's the same for humans, and I am a vegan living foods health coach, and I've helped many people overcome every disease, fourth stage, every kind of cancer, MS, Parkinson's, diabetes, Lyme, you name it. It's it's healable when we get back into homeostasis and eat the proper foods. But like you said before, if we're feeding a dog even vegan kibble, that's probably going to cause the same problems as meat-based kibble because it's like feeding your child pretzels for his entire life. You don't feed a child processed packaged food for her entire life. And that's what kibble is from my research and my logic. Like kibble is processed food. It doesn't matter if it's vegan or meat-based. It does which I will touch on, like you said, I, I mean, the heavy metals, GMOs, chemicals, pesticides, uh, you know, antibiotics, hormones, pain, torture, bad karma, fight or flight hormones that are in a slab of corpse at ground up into a dehydrated, no nutrient kibble is so much more toxic to our companion animals than a vegan kibble. Yes. You know? But because so. of the biomagnification issue, there there is definitely a significant difference there. Now, certainly the kibble, even the plant-based kibble, is not optimal. But as we all of are rushing through our daily lives, busy running around, we may not have time to prepare fresh food for our, our, ourselves sometimes, even let alone our animal companions. So sometimes there's room for compromise and doing the best we can with the circumstances. But I have some recipe books I'm going to be sharing with your viewers, and there's really exciting information coming forth in the near future that will enable people to prepare home-based meals for their animal companions with plant-based ingredients that's going to make a huge difference for their health. You're so amazing. Good. I can't wait to see those. Okay, so <laughs> like what I – listen, I know about the poison. Well, I just want to say one of the longest living dogs and many of the longest living dogs that I've personally ever met and that I've read about are vegan – um, mm -hmm. There was one in the Guinness Book of World Records that was the longest living dog for many, many years. It was the Border Collie that lived to be age 27. And then <clears throat> now that Border Collie is number five. But anyway, I, from my, what I've witnessed, animals that are fed like the standard pet food diet, which I'd like to get into because you know better than I do about exactly what is in pet food, even the companies that claim to be organic. But just from what I've witnessed, what I've read, the dogs that are vegan, my dog included, she's becoming vegan again, um, is more playful, more full of life, does not have that paw gnawing thing. She gnaws on her paw after she goes to her buddies' houses and sneaks their kibble. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. she, she does, you know, she's more playful and more full of life than these meat-eating dogs. But anyway, yeah, what is in dog food that we need to be aware of? So as you mentioned, your dog had the chewing of her feet following eating kibble. That is very common. I've seen that many times in practice where dogs develop food allergies in the form of chewing, biting, scratching, hot spots because of allergies to meat protein. In fact, the top eight food allergens for dogs are animal protein, Whoa. whether it's chicken, dairy, eggs, etc. They also happen to be the highest in concentration of 
toxic heavy metals, including mercury, arsenic, cadmium. And there, there was a study that came out uh, in 2008, by, reported by the New York Times, by the Environmental Working Group, which tested pooled blood and urine samples from 20 dogs and 37 cats at a Virginia veterinary clinic and found them to be contaminated with 48 of 70 industrial chemicals tested. My God. 43 were at levels substantially higher than found in people. Wow. Dogs were contaminated with 35 chemicals altogether, including 11 carcinogens, 31 chemicals toxic to the reproductive system, and 24 neurotoxins. Seven or 20% of the chemicals averaged at least five times higher than found in people. Wow. And another seven averaged up to five times more. The other chemicals found include stain and grease-proof coatings, flame retardant chemicals, and these don't decompose easily in the environment. They persist. So there, there's a term called persistent organic pollutants, which means even if a food is labeled organic, if it's meat or dairy or egg-based, it is going to have intrinsic components that are toxic, that aren't even finding their way onto the label because of the feature of biomagnification. Even in wild animals that are eating whatever they have access to in the wild are being found to have facial abnormalities, eye deformities, thymus malformations, impaired immune system, skin disorders, lymphatic disorders, diseases of the heart and the lungs, liver diseases, <sighs> failure to thrive. And these are wild animals. So it's no wonder that when we feed our animal companions in our homes toxic diets day after day, which have heavy metals, disease, dying, disabled, and dead meat before D meat, styrofoam packaging gets in there sometimes, proin toxins, all kinds of things that wouldn't be suitable for human consumption, then it's it's no surprise that we're seeing the level of incidence of disease like cancer and degenerative kidney disease, liver disease, arthritis, etc. cetera. Um, in, in this same study that I cited, uh, cats carried 47 chemicals, including nine carcinogens, 40 chemicals toxic to the reproductive system, 34 neurotoxins, 15 chemicals toxin, toxic to the endocrine system, as compared to seven chemicals for dogs. Some 25 other chemicals were up to five times more than in people, and in cats, they actually consume much more neurotoxic flame retardants, which are called PBDEs, and five times more methyl mercury because of all the tuna that they tend to consume. So when they measured a, a typical 10-pound cat eating one cup of dry food or one small can of wet food, the maximum contamination consumed would be 17 micrograms of mercury, which is over 30 times the reference dosage limit. God. And Ugh. in dogs, we're seeing 280 micrograms of mercury, which is over 120 times the reference dose. Dear God. Well, it's it's like we need to get back to logic. Thank you for those statistics because they're just overwhelming and disgusting. But it's time for us to get back to logic, people. You're not going to see a cat digging its paw into the deep waters where tuna swim. Cats, even in nature, don't eat tuna. They might That's eat right. little guppies or cat catfish, cats will eat That's catfish, right. or some little fish that they can catch with their little paws in shallow waters, but they ain't going out on a deep sea fishing dive trip and <clears throat> hunting for tuna. So already it's it's ridiculous that we're feeding yeah. cats big, huge fish that are bigger than humans with got, like you said, tons of mercury, pharmaceutical drugs, and yep. poison from whatever the factory farm runoff that's in our cesspools called oceans. God bless our oceans. But yeah, they're not even food that cats normally consume, nor dogs. Okay, then, like, what else I've read is that there's actually cat and dog meats in kibble. Like, when they say that extra ingredient, like, and other animal byproducts. Other means cats and dogs. Like we are. It can. I I don't know how common that is, oh. but I, I did see a report years ago that measured the penobarbital. That's the euthanasia solution used to let animals go to sleep. 
that was found in certain foods that were tested. Now, I don't know how repeatable that is, but that is a disturbing finding to consider that that would have wound up in animal food. So it is a concern for sure. And not to mention the fact that, you know, you were talking about the natural issue of cats are not fishing for tuna. So similarly, chihuahuas are not tackling cows. I mean, they, they wouldn't be eating beef in the wild. And so when people bring up the whole, oh, it's not natural to feed a vegan diet argument, it really calls the question, why are we even focusing on that exclusively when what we're feeding right now is totally unnatural anyway? What we should be focusing on is what's healthy, Amen. what's sustainable, That's what right. is going to keep our planet okay in the next generation. Right now we're facing a situation where our oceans may be completely devoid of ocean life by the year 2048 if fishing continues at the rate it is. Yep. There are yep. over three quarters of fisheries are already depleted at this point. Yeah. Every second, one to two acres of rainforest in the Amazon is being destroyed. And much of that is for animal agriculture. That's right. So we're heading on a train wreck that if we don't, reverse it not just slow it down but just stop it in its tracks and reverse it we're not going to be around to to do anything in you know 40 years from now if we keep at the rate we're going well you know it's just the truth that we're talking about here so for everybody watching what we're saying is whatever your animal your omnivore let's say your omnivorous dog might be lacking like taurine i've read about right Whatever your, your animal might be lacking because he or she is not eating meat, trust me, the, the benefits from a plant-based diet are going to nourish that animal so thoroughly that you can just get a healthy, you know, based supplement. I'm not really into supplements. I'm into whole food, whole food supplements of taurine. Or, like I do, I let my dog... My dog is vegan in the home. Um, I got derailed for a while because I got talked into feeding her raw meat. She lost weight, got scrawny, played less, um, was lethargic more. She was, you know, and yes, she could have been aging because she went from like age one to two during this time. But I noticed a difference in her energy level and in her body. And she actually looked like she was starving. And I'm like, this isn't right. Whatever. And I was getting, believe me, the least harm, local grown, non-slaughterhouse, free range, living a full life before slaughter. It's still, I don't believe in conscious murder. It's still murder. I, I, it was really hard for me. But, you know, I was feeding her this and, and she was so much better off when I was feeding her vegan, fresh, homemade food. Now she's back to that and thriving, thriving. Right. But, um, Excellent. and I actually noticed a difference because, you know, I'm a re oh, I want to see that result. So like all scientists, we come with our own prejudices, but I'm glad I saw that result. I hope it's the truth. But anyway, the point is whatever your animal is suffering from due to a lack of in her vegan kibble or vegan homemade food, it is not half as bad as what they're going to suffer from when you feed them meat based kibble. So, you, you know, if the, the one thing that they suffer from is like a low instance of taurine, which I'd love for you to talk about, actually, mm -hmm. for vegan, yeah. vegan dogs. Well, yeah, for, for dogs and for cats even more so. Cats have to have taurine. Without it, they can go blind and have right. heart disease. And for certain breeds of dogs, especially Doberman pinchers, Afghan hounds, other deep-chested breeds, Cocker Spaniels, who can develop dilated cardiomyopathy, taurine and carnitine are important to supplement and those those can be readily supplemented the the main food that you want to focus on when you're talking about assembling a menu for your animal companion you know let's we'll talk about dogs especially right now uh beans lentils tofu of course organically sourced tempeh uh, nut butters just be careful about the fat content if you're trying to have them right. minimize their caloric intake but Sometimes they need to gain weight, and in which case, nut butters would be helpful. Uh, carbohydrates like rice, quinoa, millet, rolled oats, buckwheat, potatoes, squashes, whole grain pasta, whole grain bread. And then your fruits and vegetables. You want to emphasize the leafy greens. Broccoli, green beans, Brussels sprouts, carrots, cauliflower, 
tomatoes, along with fruits that are high in antioxidants like blueberries, she raspberries, loves, strawberries, yeah. carrots, peach, uh, peaches with the pits removed, yeah. and yeah. watermelon, apples, etc. Nice, honey. Yeah. Wow. I'm salivating for my dog just thinking about that. <clears throat> I know she's listening on the other side of the door. She's like, Mom, get me some food. No, it's interesting because she loves all that plant-based earth food, and I feed it to her every day and throughout the day. And, I mean, two main meals. But um, she, when she goes out, because I let her out free, yes, the cops have shown up at my house, but that's another story. But she'll eat wild, she eats wild grasses and wild herbs and whatever is in our garden. She goes yeah. mostly for the wild grass, wild herbs, and wild food. And she will eat a dead bird or a dead rodent or a dead squirrel. She's come home with a huge carcass of a squirrel. So in that respect, she is an omnivore for whatever reason. And she's she's actually cleaning up the planet, eating the corpses of these roadkills. And so I don't feel bad feeding her a vegan diet at all. Because believe me, when she goes out into the yard, she's getting the dead birds and the dead squirrels and the dead rodents. And she's getting the fermented gut waste that's in those animals that they need because they need fermented food. And Just be careful with the rodents that they didn't get into poison because if know. they were poisoned and that was, that's what caused them to die, the rodenticide poison can cause bleeding. Oh, I know. I don't live in Malibu anymore, but Malibu, California, went poison-free, and I hope to God Mercer Island, Seattle does too where I am. So I hope oh, the okay. earth does too. I don't know. I just want to be uh, people make make sure people are aware of that because it can be an issue. It has been a, in the past where if they eat roadkill, especially rodents that died of rodenticide toxicity, oh. they can themselves oh. become vitamin K deficient and bleeding disorders can ensue. So oh. I'm be aware of. now, when we talk about supplements, there are definitely uh, supplements that are important to include when home cooking. A veggie dog and veggie cat are two supplements formulated, made by a company called Compassion Circle. You can go to CompassionCircle.com and order them. They also have ones that are specific for kittens and puppies, tailored to their needs. And the amino acids, uh, carnitine and taurine, can be supplemented in addition to uh, the, the veggie dog. But the veggie dog does contain taurine in it. And then probiotics can also be used if there are digestive issues going on, if the animal's been on a lot of antibiotics in the past to help restore the natural flora. So that, and in addition to uh, spirulina and algae, nutritional yeast, alfalfa that are non-GMO, of course. Uh, yeah. Nutritional yeast also helps with flavoring the food for cats that may be kind of finicky eaters and not as apt to adapt to a vegan food, but it has a nice cheesy flavor and it's very high in B vitamins. So my cats love it. I sprinkle it on their food and they gobble it up. Well, I know it's a neurotoxin for humans. I wonder what it would be for animals. I mean, I, I as a health coach, I do not promote, uh, you know, nutritional yeast for that reason, you know, but that's, I'll, I'll look into that, but yeah, just whatever. It's a lot better than the heavy metals chemicals, pesticides, poisons, hormones, antibiotics, pain, torture, bad karma that are in meat. So, hey, some neurotoxins with some B vitamins, a little bit better than anything meat-oriented. So there we go. I'm like, well, I don't know. I'll check into that. So uh, the, the other uh, pollutants that are found in the, the milk of nursing uh, mothers is uh, the polychlorinated dibenzodioxins, PCBDs, polychlorinated dibenzofurans, PCBFs, and polychlorinated biphenyls, as well as organochlorine pesticides such as DDT, which even though that was banned many years ago, it's still persisting in breast milk. And it's found in much higher quantities in non-vegetarians compared to vegetarians. So <sighs> these chemicals, for some reason, have found their way you know, into our bodies and the bodies of our animal companions. Arsenic fed to chickens causes very high concentrations of this toxin in their muscle tissue, and it's a known carcinogen. Uh, there are also hormones used in animal agriculture, such as bovine growth hormone in milk, and that is it's injected in about 20% of U.S. dairy cows to increase milk production. And 
while the industry claims that it's safe, that's not actually true. Uh, there are many documented toxic effects, including mastitis, that have come about, and the high levels of insulin growth factor, which is readily absorbed through the gut, can lead to an increased risk for cancers of the breast, colon, and prostate in human beings. So we have to consider this in our animal companions, too, since they are being exposed to these toxins through the, the meat and dairy-based foods that are being fed to them. And even if the food is labeled organic, when you drill down into the actual components of what the food has in it, a lot of times there are many pesticides present and the biomagnification issue is still going to make it that there are a lot of toxins in there that you're not seeing on the label. That's right, people. If if the sprayers of the chemicals on the corn that they feed the cows that they kill to feed us and dogs and cats, uh, if they have to wear hazmat suits before they spray the pesticides on the crops to kill rodents and insects, it is killing us, okay? Hello! Like, I, I just, the logic, why? Why are we still eating dairy? Why are we still eating meat? All, all, even organic, all of these dairy cows, goats, pigs, chickens are given hormones and chemicals, and even if they're organic, by the way, that whole industry, same with the pet food industry, regulates itself. The FDA, yeah. all of these industries are self-regulating. It is a joke. There is no third-party regulation system. And if there is, like the FDA or the equivalent of the Animal Safety Association, what is it called? A Well, it's the AFCO, American AFCO. Association of Feed Control Officials. So their duty is joke. to oversee the nutritional content of the food to make sure it meets certain nutritional requirements. But interestingly, <sighs> they don't have markers for testing for toxic thresholds in the food. In fact, I had to go to to some lengths to even find a lab that would test for mercury. It's not something that is readily available in my state, actually. That's surprisingly. right. Uh, that's right. So well, it why, just why goes we, yeah. to show that I think people are they're looking in the wrong direction. They're so concerned about deficiencies, which could become an issue if people don't take precautions. But they, they lose sight of the toxicities, which are just being bombarded upon us every single day. That's and then, right. you know, they sit back and scratch their heads and wonder why their animals are dying of cancer. Yeah. It's not, forget the, the deficiencies, honey. They might be deficient in one little thing that they could get from eating wild grass or foraging a squirrel that hopefully wasn't killed by rodent poison arsenic. You know, they can get whatever they need. And by the way... Animals in the wild don't eat every day like we're feeding them. They don't eat a cup of kibble two times a day filled with animal Dog. protein. I mean, sometimes dogs don't eat for two weeks in the wild. And even then, it could be a little bird or a little squirrel from my research. I don't know. What, can you talk to that? Well, that, that is true. However, in the case of cats, I would caution people to not let their cat go more than a couple days without eating because they can develop fatty liver disease, hepatic lipidosis, which is life-threatening, involving hospitalized care, and it's quite expensive. And the other thing about cats, too, is that male cats, since their anatomy is a certain way, they're at risk for obstruction if they develop crystals. So it's even more important if someone has cats and they want them to go vegan, they should monitor the urine carefully and make sure they're eating plenty of moist food, preferably more moist than kibble and ideally no kibble at all. But the thing is that the less moisture they have in their diet, the more concentrated the urine is going to become. And this happens to non-vegan cats as well. So yes. it's not simply a matter of the the ingredients of the food, it's, it's a matter of the hydration or lack thereof. That's right. And the pH of the urine. Same with humans, people. Why do you think there are dialysis clinics in mini malls nowadays? Because we're eating uh -huh. processed, packaged, crap, dead food. And our kidneys are shutting down. There is a dialysis clinic on every block. It's mm. insanity. And it's the same with our cats. Why would it be any different? Why? Cats and dogs, kidney failure, cancer... Um, arthritis, constant um, eczema, psoriasis, gnawing on the paw, all those reactions are from what we're feeding them. GMO, pesticide, poison, tortured, murdered meat, okay? Even if you, yeah. And, and the danger of feeding them meat over vegetables is, I mean, 
vegetables are sprayed with this stuff too, unless you're, you know, and you're growing it yourself. But the quantities that, that, that the animals eat of these grains and vegetables are, that are condensed and compacted into their tissues that when they're, you know, slaughtered, murdered, and then chopped up into feed is so intense that, you know, they could eat a year's supply of pesticide sprayed vegetables for one pound of meat. I mean, that's right. how condensed it is. So it's just so dangerous nowadays to feed our dogs yeah. meat based products. Dairy is the worst. Right. But, and some people have financial concerns and that might stop them from, or may, they may perceive there to be a financial obstacle to becoming a vegan or having their dog or cat be a vegan. But I would counter that by saying that, well, for one thing, by investing in good nutrition, which includes a whole foods plant-based diet, that is going to prevent diseases that are going to be much costlier down the road. That's right. And secondly, it doesn't have to be as expensive as you might think. I mean, you don't have to eat out at crossroads or you know fancy places in order to fulfill your your nutritional requirements. I mean, that's great. I've been there a couple times, but it's great. It's, it's too oily. It's too oily for me, but whatever. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, it's it's exactly for humans and animals to be healthy. You can be healthy. Well, listen, sprouts are the healthiest food on the entire earth, and they're the cheapest. If we weren't feeding them to cattle, you know, we'd have enough to feed the whole entire planet. Sprouts, whether it's an alfalfa sprout, please, non-GMO, whatever, adzuki, alfalfa, everything can sprout. I, I have pea shoot sprouts, buckwheat sprouts, and sunflower sprouts, and uh, mixed bean sprouts on my in my house right now. But yeah, sprouts, cheapest, least expensive food on earth with the most nutrients. So people, it is not that, in, it's not that expensive to be vegan and healthy vegan and healthy. It is and it is expensive to be vegan and unhealthy because all those processed packaged vegan foods are expensive. All those gourmet vegan cheeses are expensive. Making them yourself is not expensive. Again, it takes time. But when you go vegan and you cleanse and you're healthy and vibrant, you'll have less need to sleep your life away and more time to make healthy food for your dogs and your cats and yourselves. Amen. That's well, great. actually... I, I did look up V Dog. Um, I I am a, a proponent of making our own food for ourselves and our animals. So I make my dog's own food. Pump fresh pumpkin, nothing can ever. Pumpkin, lentils, rice, you know, red bell peppers, carrots. Um, last night she had Brussels sprouts and almond butter and and stuff. But um, and and sweet potatoes. But I make my dog's own. I make her own food homemade. It's so fun. It's great. I make the same food for myself and my boyfriend. It's perfect. But anyway, I looked into V Dog. It it is not organic. It does not say organic. It has canola oil in the first top five ingredients. First first few ingredients: canola oil, potato protein, and alfalfa, all of which are known to be the main GMO chemical loaded crops. So I don't know about V Dog processed food. If you know, write to the company because if you're in a pinch and you need vegan kibble. I hope that we can find some that's organic and non-GMO because that one doesn't seem to be labeled organic. But um, well, yeah, right. The company sometimes there there can be issues with sourcing ingredients, or perhaps they had to have, find a different location to source the ingredients sometimes. But definitely uh, look at different options. I mean, there are a number of companies that have other options too. So their uh, Pet Guard is a company that's not exclusively vegan, but they do have a canned vegan formula for dogs. Also, there's Evolution, uh, PetFoodShop.com. Cool. You can order uh, cans and kibble for both dogs and cats. That's all vegan. Ami Cat uh, has a kibble. Again, not ideal, but uh, for transitional purposes. And right. if you're in a pinch or heading out of town or something and need something to hide you over, if the pet sitter's not willing to do all this glorious thing that you're describing. Exactly. And, you know, there are those options. So, also, people can make a big batch one day of the week and freeze it and then do, like, individual reconstitutions or uh, reheatings as needed. Now, I did want to talk about this book by the Pitcairns. Yes! Now. This is an older edition, but this book called uh, Dr. Richard Pitcairn's Complete Guide to Natural Health for Dogs and Cats is going to have its fourth edition coming out next month in March. Nice! And in this book, they will be featuring healthy vegan diets 
for dogs and cats with yes. some featured recipes that include all kinds of yummy stuff, tofu, beans, burgers that you can make for you and your pet. Yes. And wild tofu for cats, which uh, does have uh, organic tofu, nutritional yeast, veggie cat, and pumpkin mixed in that is delicious and yummy for these uh, feline friends of ours. So keep your eyes peeled for that. You can go ahead and pre-order it on Amazon and get ready to start cooking in the kitchen for yeah. your feline and feline companions. Go our mighty, go Dr. May. See, our Dr. May's on it. What are some other sites that we can go to to find out more about healthy vegan dog and cat food and lifestyle? Yes. So there's this book called Vegetarian Dogs, and you can order it from vegetariandogs.com. And it's uh, filled with different stories and recipes about dogs that have been raised vegan, that are doing well, that you know have lived long lives. Some of them have have outlived the, what they would have been expected to. And so that's that's one resource. Uh, there There's so many books on the market. There's a Happy Healthy Pooch by Sanai Suzuki. Oh. And yeah, nice. there, there, there are books coming out all the time about these, these topics. And so just uh, also wanted to mention the um, ease of plant-based cuisine for people the earth, the animals, our health. I mean, there are so many delicious options you can share with your friendly companions, whether it's uh, kale, apple, spinach, potato, yam, celery, purple cabbage, bell peppers, baked potatoes, squash, you know, tofu, sprouts, peas, peanuts, sprouted whole grain bread with tortillas, grain salads, chopped veggies, brown rice, quinoa, millet, you know, the list goes on and on. So, we're teaming together with other vegan vets to try to get more information about how we can help our animal companions be healthy on vegan diets. We're you know, gathering data and we're looking to provide this information in a more accessible way to the public. So people Yay. are interested, you know, they can contact me. There are other veterinarians in other areas. We are still trying to gather information about that, that might be interested in joining us. So if anyone out there is interested in this, you know, feel free to contact me. But they're, they're veterinarians in Arizona, um, up north in Northern California, Ukiah, Philadelphia, Utah, Massachusetts. You know, they're holistic vets. Not all holistic vets are vegan, but there's more and more of them are learning about why this is so important, why taking care of our planet is important. I mean, when we consider that the Earth's fresh water is being used up at such an alarming rate, one third of the, the fresh water from the Earth is used for the meat and dairy industry. That's right. 51% of global greenhouse gas emissions are due to livestock. Yep, to kill so. our children, ourselves and our children and our pets. That's right. And the majority of our tax dollars go to subsidize the dairy industry to put more of the poison into schools. Yep. And food banks and other organizations. Yep. Let's just give kids more dairy and keep them sick their whole lives so they need our pharmaceutical drugs. That's another it, video. That's another video. Right. Right. Well, I think people need to be vigilant and be involved in making a difference in the government. For example, the USDA just recently removed the animal welfare inspection reports from their website, which is really quite alarming. So mm -hmm. there's a petition on change.org to urge them and demand that this be put back up there because without this crucial information, it makes the work of animal advocates much, much harder. And we deserve to know how animals are being treated and hold these animal abusers accountable. So I would ask that viewers call the USDA and their phone number is 844-820-2234. Again, that number is 844-820-2234. Are you calling them right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna All right. Call, I'm going to call them as soon as we hang up. Thank uh, you, my little guide. You are my guide. Oh, yes, I will call them. And, and demand that they put the inspection reports back up. We Dang. need to know how animals are being treated. Amen, sister. Well, on that note, do you have a few more minutes to talk about snacks that dogs eat? Like 
rawhide? Sure. Well, that's a that's a nightmare. I I don't recommend rawhides for a number of reasons. I mean, ethical, environmental, the toxins that are used in processing that. I've also had issues where pets developed issues from their teeth getting fractured, eating raw bones even. So I would choose a Kong toy as my go-to rubber-based, very soft and healthy. They just have some peanut butter put in it, put in the freezer, make a little peanut butter popsicle, and the pup will be happy for hours just licking away that peanut butter and being Cute. quite content. Okay, I have a I have a gift certificate to my local pet shop. I'm going to go buy one. Since I am not going to be buying any of the pet food, I may as well buy the Calm Toy. It's called the Calm Toy. Yeah. I think I need one, especially when I talk about these topics. Yes, my friends, rawhide. Guess what's in it? Lead, arsenic, mercury, chromium salts, formaldehyde, other lethal, lethal chemicals, glue to hold it together, um, vomiting, choking, poisoning, salmonella, death. That's what these things cause, my friends. Rawhide is pure poison. And it just brings me back to why the heck aren't these elements that are being pushed on us and our pets labeled? Why aren't they labeled like cigarette packs are labeled? Uh, danger of death, mutation, choking, vomiting, um, cancer, tumors, like rawhide. I see so many, I'm, I am a dog sitter. I take care of dogs. So many of my dog loving little dog friends are eating rawhides. I come into the house, they're chewing rawhides and I'm just like, Oh, and they bleach them to make them white with, with chemicals, with uh, titanium dioxide. It's insanity what we're doing. And they, the FDA can't label it as food because it's not food because it's a block of chemicals. So they don't even label it as food, but they won't take it off the market because it's considered a toy. But they eat it. They eat it. They chew it and eat it. It's crazy, right. my friends. Sorry, It I'm can not... even cause obstructions in their GI tract. There have been cases of dogs choking because if it becomes so small after they gnaw on it that they're able to swallow it, and yet it's too big to pass through the digestive system, it can get stuck in the esophagus or even the stomach, and then surgery time, opening them up. That's right. And that's really invasive. I, I had to do a surgery last year on a dog who had chewed, not a rawhide, but a plastic toy, and there were about six pieces of this plastic toy stuck in this dog's stomach. Oh. And he had been vomiting for a month because he couldn't puke up the plastic toy pieces. So oh, he had to finally go to amazing. surgery. Thank God so. for you, honey. Thank God for you. Well, okay, what do you recommend for, um, it's like we did talk about the allergies from pet food, which like the gnawing and the over scratching and stuff. In, I, I'm not a fan of antibiotics or any pharmaceutical drugs or vaccines or anything like that. What can we do naturally? Yes, get the dogs onto a vegan diet first and foremost. But, and I believe me, I've never seen a vegan dog with any of these issues. Have you? I haven't. Well, it, it does happen sometimes, but also if a dog is allergic to something, identifying that and removing it or doing what we call food elimination trial where we restrict the number of ingredients to a narrow list, like, you know, if there's a suspicion of a meat protein allergy, excluding all animal products for at least eight weeks and giving that a solid college try, if you will, for that eight week period is what you've got to do. Because if, if they're sneaking a little treat here and a little treat there, uh, you know, a little beef jerky and a little of this pizza, whatever neighbors or friends are coming over and sneaking treats to the dog, then that's going to goof up the trial and yeah. you won't yield the desired results. Yep. So when you mentioned vaccines, I do want to point out that I do think over-vaccination is an issue. It does tend to deplete the natural immunity over time. It can lead to autoimmune disorders. So I tend to recommend boosters only if they haven't had them for a long time or offer the, the titer testing for right. checking antibody titers. And I actually recently did that and the dog had high enough titers in there was no need to do the vaccine. In fact, the, the times I've seen Parvo have been in puppies, uh, never in an adult dog. So after that phase of puppyhood is passed, it's usually not as much of a concern. Now, you do want to clean up and, you know, if they go to a dog park and there are dogs coming through there, who knows what viruses they may be carrying and they could be shedding it in their stool and things like that. But 
again, reinforcing the immune system of the animal through good nutrition is very critical, more so than vaccines. And some of the vaccines can have toxic ingredients, you know, mercury and aluminum. Can so, and do. And the yeah. viruses that are in the vaccines are not even the human strain virus. So not only are you getting injected with a, a strain from a monkey or a, a horse or a chicken, you are also getting heavy metal straight to your brain and to all your organs. So yes, on the vaccine topic, same for humans. Uh, like from, again, from my research and my experience, animals that I've read about that have parvo and rabies are minuscule and it's not because of the vaccines, okay? It's because every disease has a life cycle and diseases die out, just like polio. Polio was dying out when the vaccine came out and they made it look smoke and mirrors like that vaccine eradicated polio. No, polio was already on its way out and polio-like symptoms were caused by spraying chemicals where the kids would run behind the trucks that were spraying chemicals. So <laughs> anyway, don't even get me started. That's another video too, but these vaccines, like the amount of of cases that I've read about with dogs dying of, of parvo and rabies are minuscule compared to the amount of cases that I've read about that I see in my own life of dogs having tumors, cancer, chronic conditions, allergies, asthma, um, arthritis, just everything that humans have, diabetes. I mean, these dogs, I mostly work with dogs and cats. Are, are, have these allergies, they need eye drops, shots, injections, they're over-medicated, over-vaccinated, and they are sickly, just like humans, who are over-medicated, over-vaccinated, and eating an overabundance of crap, okay? I recommend people watch Trace Amounts, which is a very eye-opening documentary about the toxic issue with mercury in vaccines and how that's linked to autism. That's and right. And you mentioned this is a controversial video, well, I'm sure that's a controversial statement, but I've researched this in depth. I've spent hundreds of hours looking into the research behind autism and vaccines. And believe me, there is definitely something going on there which is not made known to the public. And when the truth does come out, and I'm hoping it does come out soon, people are going to be absolutely shocked that right. they've been able to believe this for so long that the CDC has just lied to Congress under oath That's saying right. there's no connection between mercury and vaccines and autism, and it's not at all the case. And there's a whistleblower, uh, Dr. William Thompson, who has gone on record saying he feels great shame when he meets families with autism because of his role in perpetuating that myth. That's right. That there's no connection. Read all about it, people. Educate yourself. Stop listening to the people that told you cigarettes were safe and every other drug, Fen, Fen, Ritalin, every other drug, every single pharmaceutical drug, every single vaccine, Vioxx, I mean, all these drugs and foods, the red food dye that they still put in Skittles and, cheer and Fruit Loops, you know, all these things that are still allowed in our food by the FDA who are in bed with all those junk food, pharmaceutical, dairy, meat, big pharma, mafia companies are are promoting these things. They're, they are not out for your best interest. They are out for their best interest. Educate yourselves, people. Yes, watch Trace Amounts. Watch Vax. Watch the entire series of Vaccines Revealed. Read the book, Thermarisol, edited by RFK Jr. Read the book, Vaccination is Not Immunization, because it is not, honey. It is not. You... That's the yeah. whole thing, and we talked about it with pets, and it's the same for humans, all living, breathing beings, same thing. When you inject an animal or feed it crap or give it antibiotics, what's going to come out of the toxic mess that those things in the body cause is so much worse than rabies, honestly. I mean, maybe not worse than rabies or parvo, but it's so much worse than what you're vaccinating for. The cancer and the tumors and the lethargy your whole life and the chronic diseases and the autoimmune diseases – for humans and animals that we are developing because of these practices are so much worse than what we're vaccinating against. I'm sorry, I'd rather have whooping cough, smallpox, measles, chickenpox any day than what's happening, autism, um, psychosis, all kinds of mental illness. Sudden infant death syndrome. Sudden infant death syndrome. death syndrome, right, from vaccines, exactly. I'd rather have mumps, measles, chickenpox, and develop my own immunity, which is the only way to truly develop immunity, is to get it yourself. Anyway, I, I love what you stand for, Dr. May. I love, 
I love that you've done your, your homework and done your research, and I am so grateful for other logical, practical researchers and like yourself. And thank you. Okay, one more thing. I'm like, I have so many questions for you. What about natural? Well, we never even answered that question. What can what can um, caretakers of animals do when they have diseases and disorders instead of rushing to the vet to get an antibiotic? What what are some natural remedies? Let's say for gnawing the paw or for eczema or for fleas. I'd love for you to talk about fleas or hot spots. Yeah. 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 I mean, every situation is different. So getting a veterinarian involved and understanding the onset and frequency and severity and tailoring the treatment to the patient is important. When it comes to flea control, you know, living in California, we do get issues with fleas, unfortunately, and it can be hard to control with exclusively natural methods. But I have advised diatomaceous earth to be used as a natural alternative to some of the other stronger chemicals. And that is a white powder you can get at pet food stores like Sentinel Pet Feed, or you can order it online. It, it's basically from the ocean, and it's diatoms that are dehydrated, and it desiccates or dries out the flea. So it, it just kind of uh, dries them out, and that's how they die. So as long as it's not inhaled, because if it is inhaled, that's an issue. It can cause irritation to the airways, but it can be licked, and that's fine. They, they lick it off. There's no problem. You just don't want to let it billow up into dust clouds and then have them inhale it. So what I suggest is either um, gently pour it around their hair coat, taking care not to let it dust up, and put it on the carpet underneath furniture, let it sit for about a day or two, and then vacuum it up. Oh, There's also so uh, eucalyptus leaves that are really uh, good for deterring uh, fleas, and a little bit of garlic. It's actually a misnomer that some people believe garlic is unsafe. In small amounts, it is safe for dogs and cats. Um, there was the, the study that that assertion that claims garlic is unsafe was based on was based on a study where they shoveled like insane amounts of garlic cloves down and then it caused a slight amount of anemia. It was it's a ridiculous thing. So well yeah um, but really, that being said, yeah. onions should not be fed because those can cause anemia. The other foods that are not to be fed include chocolate, uh, marijuana, obviously I mean that should go without saying, but sometimes especially now in California, you know, with this new law that passed can't be too careful. And, and Washington, and I've seen it in pet food stores. Oh, really? They, yeah, they sell CBD I, treats for pets. Well, yeah, what happens is, you know, the human will be munching on this thing that has the edible marijuana in it, and then, whoops, a little crumb fell on the ground, and then Fido comes swooping in. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Goes, I think so. I saw that movie. No. <laughs> So I've actually seen it in real life, and I'm, it, it, it's not as funny when it actually happens. <laughs> oh, my God. So please, people, be responsible and take precautions. Don't let them get into prescription medications or recreational drugs. It, it's really not a good look when that happens. Uh, the other foods to avoid would be raisins and grapes. They have been implicated in kidney failure because we don't know the exact mechanism or toxic principle, but... You know, that there could be issues with pesticide residues, but whatever the reason is, it's safer to just avoid those foods. If you have any birds, don't feed them avocados. There's a specific component in avocados that can be toxic to birds. And in excessive amounts, avocados can also be toxic to dogs. But small amounts, moderate amounts are acceptable. Good, because she loves avocado. <laughs> I love avocado, too. Good. Can I mention anything about uh, my group, VAPA, while well, we have a minutes yes oh my gosh please honey yes who are this you how the, do we the, find you <laughs> this is the group i'm starting it's the veterinary association for the protection of animals and i'm trying to educate the veterinary community about why being vegan is important oh. i was one of just a handful of vegans when i was a student at uc davis veterinary school and there are not as many vets that are vegan as there ought to be so i'd like to build a network of community members who want to support this effort to educate the veterinary profession. And I think this will enable us to move the ball forward for animal rights in a major way, because if we have more vegan veterinarians leading this movement of compassion and stewardship of the environment, environmental responsibility, responsibility to our own health, our own body temples, we can affect such massive change. I also want to help vet schools have more humane surgical teaching methods in their curriculum. 
currently there are still vet schools that do what are called terminal surgeries in which animals are collected sometimes from shelter or maybe stray dogs running in the streets. They're put in these teaching labs, put under anesthesia, and cut open and then killed at the end of these exercises, which is so tragic. Oh it also damages the psyche of the vet students who are made to perform these procedures against their better will and judgment, but because they feel compelled to, because they may be threatened with flunking if they don't. And there are oh. better ways. Uh, there's the newest vet school in the United States, which is Western University College of Veterinary Medicine, has a reverence for life philosophy. Yay. They don't have any harmful or terminal use of animals in their curriculum, which is awesome. And they have a willed body donation program. So as a house call vet, one of the things that I get called out to do is euthanize animals when they're suffering and in need of that transition. And so one of the things I offer clients is they can donate the pet's body to the vet school, and then they still can get his or her remains back in two years of ashes if they choose to. This is a way to provide an important legacy and also help that students learn in a humane and compassionate way. So my hope is that this type of program will spread to other vet schools, and if there's more awareness about it, then check out vapavets.org. Uh, we can get this ball rolling and, and really get people on board. Because so many people come to me who want to become veterinarians, and they say, you know, Dr. May, I really want to be a vet, but I love animals, and I can't stand the thought of hurting an animal to become a vet. And these are precisely the people we want to become yes, veterinarians. Yes, They're compassionate, bright, vegan, want to change the world, but then, of course, they don't want to have to sacrifice their ethics in order to do so. Right. So this is a sister organization to PCRM, which is the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Thank God for you, honey. So, Yay! Yay! PCRM has done amazing work, and they've gotten rid of dog labs and medical schools, which has done so much wonderful work for people who want to pursue medical training without hurting animals. And now we want to do the same for veterinary schools, too. You're so beautiful. Thank you for your altruism. Well, on that note, I'd actually love to read a quote from your website that you wrote. Okay, sure. So this is a quote by Dr. Our Mighty May. She is a mighty, mighty one. Veganism is the answer for every area of life, my friends, and here we go. Factory farmed animals are confined in spaces so small that basic movements such as turning around or stretching a limb are difficult or impossible. Male calves born to dairy cows are taken from their mothers at birth and transported to veal production facilities where they are kept in small crates for their entire lives, screaming and crying and butting their heads against the cage, might I add. Then slaughtered between three to four months of age, thank God they're put out of their misery early, unlike dairy cows, which are continually impregnated in order to keep them continuously lactating, then their babies are snatched away from them and they scream and cry for months at, with depression and then you're drinking that milk with the sad grief hormones. Anyway, many dairy cows become lame and suffer from infections of the udder. Yeah, they're in grief. When afflicted with these ailments, the cows are then slaughtered since it's no longer profitable to keep them. So again, we, if we're eating meat and our pets are consuming diseased, sick, grief-ridden animals when we eat a bite of flesh on the end of our forks. So here, this is, I'm adding my quotes in between yours. But anyway, farmed animals are routinely castrated, branded, and dehorned without anesthesia. Watch the videos, they are horrifying. Egg-laying hens are crammed into battery cages so small they cannot spread their wings. Male chicks, biologically incapable of laying eggs, are killed on their first day of life. Not only killed, but thrown into a huge plastic plastic <clears throat> garbage bag and thrown out in the dumpster so that they can suffocate to death, peck each other to death, and die a long, excruciating death inside of a huge uh, plastic black bag in a dumpster. Chickens undergo de-beaking, in which case, where the tips of their beaks are seared off without anesthesia. It is more horrific than pulling all of your teeth out at once, it, it, I've heard. Um, if dogs and cats were subjected to these abuses, this is what I love that you say. If dogs and cats were subjected to these abuses that farmed animals endure and the inhumane slaughter that they endure, the rape, um, you know, uh, we're, we're up in arms about our female reproductive rights. Every single bite of flesh that you eat on the end of your fork is a dominated, raped, and like tortured animal female 
whose reproductive rights have never been hers, okay? So, it, if dogs and cats were subjected to that abuse, mutilation, drug regimens that cause chronic pain, transport through all weather extremes, inhumane slaughter, not to mention everything I just mentioned about the females that we eat, the perpetrators would be prosecuted for animal cruelty. Farmed animals are just as sensitive, intelligent, and capable of feeling pain as the dogs and cats that are our cherished companions. So I hope that Dr. May and I have given you some food for thought. I hope it's not food from an animal for thought, but vegan plant-based food for thought in this discussion about, you know, honoring our planet, our companion animals, and ourselves by converting them to a vegan diet, honey. You'll see. They will be more vibrant, more full of life, more full of love, live longer, and be your companions longer and less lethargy, more, more playfulness till the end. And you will also have a very limited carbon footprint when you do this. So get on board. Get on the VAPA wagon. Get into the vegan feeding of your dogs and cats and companion animals. Uh, obviously, you can write to Dr. May. How do we get a hold of you and what is your website again? veganvet.net you can find dr Armighty may at veganvet.net you can ask her any questions email her she does house calls in the los angeles area she is amazing i know people who've worked with her who's, who've sent their animals to her who she's worked with and she's absolutely incredible not to mention an acupuncturist for animals. yes i do acupuncture chiropractic herbs and laser therapy oh girlfriend you're so amazing. You're so amazing. I'm just so grateful that you're out there spreading the good word and keeping our companion animals safe, sound, and happy and healthy. You are Thank my you. real life hero. Thank you for being a humanitarian that I needed to chronicle. And is there anything else that you'd like to tell our viewers? If they'd like to get involved with VAPA, please check out VAPAVETS.org. And you don't have to be a veterinarian to join in our efforts. We welcome anyone who supports our mission of educating the veterinary profession about veganism. And we're going to be giving presentations to clinics in the LA area in the beginning, and then we'll travel elsewhere or help facilitate vegan food offerings and documentary screenings at other clinics around the, the globe. Yay, babe. Thank you. You're such a heroine. Thank you. You're the good heroine. I so appreciate you. Yeah, it's always boggled my mind that vets are not vegan. It's like, what are, what? <coughs> what? <coughs> but anyway, get on the wagon. It's no, no time is better than today to start your more altruistic, compassionate life and contact our, our mighty May, Dr. Our mighty May, um, because she will steer you in the right direction and kindred spirits must unite. So thank you thank so you. much for joining me, Dr. May. You're so amazing. Lots of love. Namaste, Dr. May, and I will see you soon. Thank you. Lots of Bye -bye. love.